morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Sao Lima from MIT and from Southwest Jordan University. Uh, I'm so lucky to be the first speaker in this session on the conference. Um, today, I'm going to introduce a new numerical method to model the interaction between real and will. Um, real and will contact uh, has been uh, studied for centuries, and it is still one of the most important to topics in this area. Uh, yes, uh, it is still one of the most important topics in this research area because the real will contact is the most important contact in the real system. Um, I think everyone in this room should be very familiar with the Carter's theory, uh, Cocker's theory, Shen's theory, and so on. Uh, I'm not going to uh, review the details uh, of these models, but uh, there is one common uh, uh, assumption in these models, that is, they share the column friction uh, uh, law assumption. Uh, column friction is, states that the uh, ratio between the tangential force and the normal force is a constant, and that constant is called coefficient of friction. Um, Column friction works very well in many applications, but it's not always accurate, especially when the train speed now has grown to, a, to about 300 kilometers per hour. Um, so uh, people made a lot of modifications uh, on these models. Uh, for example, one, uh, some, um, one way is to assume that the, velo uh, the coefficient of friction is velocity dependent. Um, however, uh, column friction is not the only way to model friction, and uh, there are, in fact, there are many other people. There is uh, another group of people that do research on friction, that is the tribology community. Uh, the tribology community, they do research on friction, they do experiments, and they model the friction. And they, and they model the friction, and one common way they do is to uh, try to push the understanding of friction into a smaller scale. For example, the uh, scale of surface roughness. Uh, if we can model the uh, friction um, with the scale of surface roughness, then we can have a better understanding of friction at, uh, with more details. Um, so, uh, I, this is what our model is going to do. We will, bro uh, we will borrow some insights from the tribology community into the research on the real wheel, uh, the real wheel contact. So this is uh, this is a, a Israel research group. They measured the onset of friction with high-speed camera at the uh, frame uh, at uh, more than twenty thousand. Uh, frames per second to measure the uh, onset of friction. And they also use a uh, numerical method to simulate the process. So uh, the model they use is, a, uh, is an earthquake-like model. And the key idea in, in that model is to model the friction between the two objects with a lot of springs in between. And each spring in this model represents a, Ap uh, asperity on the surface. That is the surface roughness. Uh, so we do it in a similar way. We, so uh, by sampling a lot of asperities in the contact patch. Um, there is another research team in the U.S. They do uh, uh, molecular. Uh, they, they do uh, molecular system uh, dynamics uh, simulation to model the. A contact between a uh, surface with a uh, single uh, asperity contact. So each, concept, uh, each asperity here is modeled by uh, thousands of uh, molecules. And they, their simulation shows that um, in the process of the contact, they first make the contact, and then um, the asperity contact is prolonged and the force will increase from zero and then reach a stable value and then drops to zero when the contact breaks. So what we do is 
we, simplif uh, we simplify this process by this uh, model. Uh, so for each asperity, the, uh, the contact force increases first and reaches a constant value and drops back to zero. And after the break, after the contact is break, uh, it will be inactive for a short time uh, before the, another contact is made again. So in this contact patch, uh, hundreds of uh, asperities are sampled, and each, uh, each uh, asperity is modeled with a uh, with, uh, uh, force curve like this. So let's go to the result. Um, because the simulation runs with, uh, 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 start with uh, zero velocity, so, there, uh, so the force will start growing from zero, and it reaches the maximum, uh, uh, maximum value, and it drops back a little bit. This is the progress of uh, onset of friction from static friction to dynamic friction. Um, if we look at the, uh, this curve is what we are very familiar with. Uh, it's the uh, traction coefficient versus the creepage. So this, um, the traction coefficient will increase with the increase of uh, uh, creepage and it reaches the maximum and it drops back a little bit. Uh, I think everyone in this room is very familiar with this curve. And we do our uh, validation of this model with uh, experiment data found in literature, and they matched very well. And then we look at the uh, distribution of contact forces. Um, if, we looked from, if we look at the contact patch from uh, um, longitude, uh, direction, this is the front set, this is the uh, tail set. Uh, the curve, uh, the black curve is the tangential force and the uh, red curve is the normal force. They are rough because this is a discontinuous model, it's not a continuous model as usual. And this is the ratio between tangential force and the normal force. You can observe an increase from the front, from the front set to the tail set. And these figures shows how the, uh, how the ratio between tangential force and the normal force will, be, uh, will increase with the creepage increasing. So at the very low creepage, uh, you will observe very low uh, ratio in most area. And with the increase of the creepage, you will see rising of the ratio uh, from the uh, tail side. And then if the uh, creepage further increases, then the um, a ratio will be much larger. And uh, if we view uh, this uh, stochastically, it uh, shows the distribution of normal force and the tangential force. And the ratio, uh, the yellow area can be viewed as the sleeping area. Uh, which is ver uh, very, uh, which is very similar with the Cocker's model assumption, but we don't make that assumption. This our model generally, uh, naturally generates this distribution. And uh, in conclusion, uh, this um, uh, our uh, we present a numerical model, and this uh, model, uh, the simulation results uh, can validate the experiment observations. And the model can explain well the uh, declining tendency of uh, traction coefficient with the creepage. And it's a dynamic model, so it can reveal many details of the frictional contact between real and wheel. And this dynamic uh, behavior uh, is uh, similar with the uh, uh, result from the Cocker's model. And for some discussion, we did a lot of um, uh, simulation to, uh, to see wh how the velocity will affect the coefficient, uh, the traction coefficient. We see that in our model, the traction coefficient is not very sensitive with the velocity. Um, I think um, 
this is by comparison, uh, comparison with the block model. Um, we think that uh, maybe it's because uh, we didn't consider the temperature due to uh, the velocity, the temperature increase due to the friction. So we may increase, uh, include that uh, uh, temperature effect in our model in the future. So uh, thanks the NSFC and the Southwest University for the support of this work. Thank you.